Welcome to the video! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I've never done that before. Tell me if you think it's funny. Actually, just, just, just don't, don't tell me. I don't want to know. I don't want to know if it's, if it's negative criticism. I can't take it. It hurts my soul. So, today we're going to be talking about how to make friends. Fun. Very fun and not patronizing video for all you people out there who just like to look up on YouTube how to, how to do stuff, how to get around life, how to, I don't know, learn how to brush your teeth upside down or some kind of weird... Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not right. It's not right. Just ignore it. Um, so t <laughs> today we're going to be talking about how to make friends as an autistic person, which sounds very simple. Um, it's a lot more simple to explain it, which is why I'm doing it, uh, rather than helping you know someone individually or actually making friends, which is the difficult part. So the main issue with having autism and making friends is that, number one, you're a very different person. Um, your brain works a lot differently to theirs. Uh, you work on a more logical, I know I say logical a lot, just, just, just go with it. But you work on a more, a more logical level, so it means that a lot of your speech is, is very to the point. Um, when you say you want to do something or you ask someone if they want something, then you mean that, you don't just, you're not just trying to like test them to see if they feel differently about it or something. Just, it can make it very difficult to start a dialogue. Um, especially if they don't know that you're autistic. And the thing is, is that it would probably help if they knew that you're autistic and they knew quite a bit about it. But if you're just meeting them firsthand and you start talking about autism and you just go, Hi, my name is Tom and I have a special needs. <laughs> and I'm autistic. Be my friend. I need it. <laughs> Because that's not how people work. Um, sadly, I've I've gone many years thinking that if you just you just do it enough, if you just say why you want to be friends with someone enough and the reasons, then someone's gonna be like, he's got it. He's a mastermind. He's he's broken the code. He's getting straight down to it. Let's be friends. And sometimes that does work, and sometimes people run with it. But in the in the long term, it can get a bit. It doesn't it doesn't work. To be honest, so today I'm going to be decoding the mind of neurotypicals, um, non-autistics, confusing creatures, and um, I'm going to be diving into um, some ways that you can help yourself. I'm going to give you some therapy. I'm going to give some some beautiful therapy from my mouth, and I will talk and put sound into your ears. I don't even know what that accent is. Hey! You wanna know how to make some friends? I do! <laughs> so, number one. So this is gonna be a little bit like a, a five-step process of how to, how, to, how to make friends, how to be sociable. So, we're gonna be talking about real life. That real stuff, boy. Number one, this is called building your confidence. This is called understanding how it feels to initiate a conversation with somebody and that it's okay to feel nervous about it. Because the thing is, things don't really get easier um, unless you're just having a really good day and you're feeling confident or you've drank an excess of recreational type beverages. Um, so the first thing is making conversation uh, with people. Uh, this is a very easy thing to say to do, but it's not exactly that easy to to do it. Uh, especially if you're overthinking it a lot and you you know you're looking for videos on how to make friends. And you can do this in literally any situation. If the the best places that you can go to are hairdressers, that's usually a good one. Supermarkets, coffee shops. Um, I'm talking about talking to the, the people who are paid to talk to you. 
this this is steps this is, this is not making friends. Uh, this is just a, a little stepping stone. Uh, you're gonna get used to just making comments about things that don't really have any context or matter, which is a big thing for us. Um, getting used to that kind of thing is a very important step um, to socialising on a regular basis and making friends. And this sort of comfort comfortability, um, it gets easier the more you do it in, in a certain way. So if you were to, you know, go and say, weather's a bit rubbish, isn't it? Or just make a comment on the, on the products that you're buying or what's good, what's your favourite. What's your favourite coffee? <laughs> Be my friend. <laughs> but this type of thing is just getting used to the, the anxiety that comes with talking to people um, first hand and making comments that, you know, just don't really seem to matter and you don't want to talk about, which you, you have to do. Um, it's not going to get easier the more you do it. You just get used to the, the feeling that you get when you, when you start talking to somebody. Because you, you've got this thing in your mind where you're thinking, oh my God, like, are they going to look at me in a weird way or like get freaked out or something like that and you know that, that all that all that kind of thing and even if that did happen does it really matter you, you don't even know them like you could be talking to gerald from computer warehouse and he just kind of gives you a funny look or he just speaks to you in a weird way who cares it's gerald screw gerald you're working on yourself boy girl homie so that's the first step, getting your confidence, getting used to that horrible feeling of not knowing whether someone's going to punch you in the face because you say hi to them. Um, best thing to do is not to, to go up and just say hi. Um, it's good to just jump straight into it. That's the best way. So you're now on stage two, you used to this kind of thing. You know what's going to happen, you know what you're going to feel. You want to put yourself in the best situation possible to make friends and for an autistic person, that's going to be one of your special interests or something that you're interested in. For example, dodgeball. You know, it's, it's not a very competitive thing unless you're some dodgeball person who likes chucking balls at people. Don't know what you get up to in your spare time, Mr. Mr. Dodgeball. Be chucking your balls about. So this is a, a very good place for autistics because you know the context. You know what's happening, everyone's, if it's a first time event and the first time this club's been set up or first time in a year or something, you go to it, everybody doesn't know everybody. Best opportunity for you to talk to people because everyone wants to socialise, that's why they go to it. They're not going there to be dodgeball world champion and pwn some noobs with their squishy balls. So again, you're gonna, just going to use the same technique that you used in the first one, to make conversation. Just say like, where are you from? Not where you're from immediately. That's a bit weird, isn't it? It's it's a very difficult thing. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Just best thing to do: talk about the subject. Uh, talk about dodgeball. You know, you could just say, "Oh, I look cool. I thought I'd come down." Just say why you did it. Um, even make friends. You just thought, "Oh, I'm new here. I want to come make some friends. Uh, look at some people who like dodgeball." Do you like dodgeball? And that's gonna that's gonna be the best situation. And so you're gonna you're gonna want to talk about the subject as much as possible. So this means that you're you're getting over your understanding that after a while of talking to someone about something or whatever, the anxiety that comes from initiating sort of you know peaks. You know maybe it stays there for maybe a couple of hours, not a couple of hours, a couple of a few minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes. Still gonna feel a bit weird. It gets easier as you as you go on with it. And if you're doing something sporty, that means you're you're gonna be releasing all those good feel good chemicals in your brain, and you're gonna feel socially looped, looped up to be talking to people socially. Anyway, so that's number two. Now that you have passed the initiation and you understand that it's gonna get better over time. Uh, if you've done this a few times, you know, go about, you talk to the same person. You can also see that maybe it's getting easier to, to start initiating with them because you, you're comfortable, you know they're not gonna hate you, they, they know you, you know them. Everything's good. Everything's good in La Da Land. Everything's hunky-dory. Number three is getting to know somebody. 
So now that you've talked about a subject that you may or not like, or may like, or whatever, we're gonna go. We're gonna roll with this dodgeball sketch here. Maybe you talked about dodgeball a few times. You've chucked some dodgeballs at them, and they've chucked some at you, and you're having fun. Um, you're gonna to want to start, you know, taking it, the conversation away from the subject. You're not gonna go and say like, "What's your postcode?" or "What's your address?" or you just say like, "Whereabouts you from?" Like if they say they're around here, it's like, "Ah, oh, cool!" Like, and then they they talk about it. You bait, you ask questions, um, almost as if it's an interrogation, um, but not in a way that you would do it in an interrogation, obviously. Oh yeah, yeah. I come from from uh, Scarbeck. Where? Where in Scarbeck? What's your postcode address? <laughs> no, you don't want you don't want to be doing that. You want to be just flippantly as possible. Um, just try and you know pace yourself when you're talking. Look around. You know, if they're playing dodgeball, maybe you could space out the conversation through intermittent times in the dodgeball session. This is not just a, this is a course about dodgeball, by the way. It's just for, for any situation, any any club. I don't know, some anime club. Uh, probably probably stay away from those places. You gonna you gonna want to you know know about them, know who they are, like what do they do? They're a student. They have a job. They have kids. Ask them about that. You know, and you're gonna want to stay in that phase of talking to someone for. As, as long as possible, to be honest. Um, don't go like adding them on Facebook and start messaging them every night or anything. Just like see them at the place, you know, see them at the dodgeball place. I'd say if I was going to put a timeline on it, you want to go from about maybe a month, maybe a month's a good good. It may, it may be quite hard if you're feeling like lonely and stuff, and you you want to get this social train on the on the roll but you can do you can talk to lots of people you can you can do the same thing with a lot of people and maybe there's a bit of a group so you can talk to people in the group and after after that after you've you know gone like a month or something here comes stage number four number four we're so we're so high this is this is number five over here we're nearly there we gotta make that stretch number four You're going to want to add them on Facebook. Now that I think about it, if they suggest that they want to add you on Facebook or something, or you know you have interest in the same events, go ahead. Um, just don't try and push it too much. Um, but at this stage, you're going to want to like exchange contact numbers, whatever like that. Um, but not just because you want to exchange contact numbers. There needs to be a reason for it. Not because you like them. That's weird. You can't just like people. Um, you can do. You know, just just ignore me, like I'm I'm full of rubbish. See? I ain't got no friends. So yeah, now now that you've 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 got someone in your in your radar that you, you think is a cool person, again, don't go messaging them every night, that's weird. Um don't go messaging them every two days. Don't get into any sort of habit where you're you you've got a little timer going, you've got little alerts on your calendar saying, Oh, I'll talk to them at this pace. He said, Not for two days. Therefore, good for three days. Um, don't do that. You're gonna to want to talk to them for a reason at any point. You know, just if you haven't seen them for a long time, you can say, "Hey, how are you doing? What's up?" Just have a nice little conversation and then end it. Um, but most of the time, you're gonna to want to talk about something that's related to real life. Um, so if you know if there's a, a dodgeball social that's gonna be going on and you. Yeah, you could you could just message them and say you're going to this social and be like, hey, yeah, I'll come too. And any sort of other thing, you know, there's a party going on in the area. Um, I don't know. You want to go trampolining, something like that. Maybe you could get a bit of a group together. It really does depend on the type of person. You know, you want to make sure that there's someone that you like. And if there's probably someone that you like, they're probably going to be called cool trampolining if they like dodgeball. Trampolining dodgeball. It's the future. The future. Now you've you've you're, you're on terms. Your friends. You you are classified as friends. You don't need to ask them. You don't need to say, "Can you tick this box? Sign off your mother mother's maiden name and your credit card number to make sure that this is all legitimate and we're friends." And 
you don't need to ask them. At this kind of point, you you, you want to be like, you probably slipped it in a few times. You could say, you know, I'm autistic, all that kind of stuff. You can say, yeah, maybe it depends on the person, but if you're feeling it, then. So you've had fun, you like them, you've met up a few times, all that kind of stuff. It sounds like a dating video, this, but it's, it's really not. Um, it sounds like it though, doesn't it? You probably could, you probably could use this as a dating video. New video upload, <laughs> the same video with this different title. But yeah, knowing that you've you've got got a little group together, all of you like certain things, you know what they like. So if you see something that they might like, you say like, "Hey, do you want to go?" So it looks cool. Don't push it too much. Just say like, "I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go." Um, if you want to come along, yeah, become be fun, be good. Yeah, so this comes to the last stage, which is good friends. Or, you wouldn't say best friends, best friends sounds a bit too intimidating and weird. But yeah, if, you, if you're good friends, um, this means probably if, you, if you're around my age, right, in your 20s or something, uh, on, and above to be honest, you're probably going to be meeting them uh, maybe like once every two weeks, as a, as a minimum. I guess uh, it can it can be more obviously if you've got some stuff going on, then there's more chances to meet. You know, if you're studying, if you you could say, oh, "I just want to get together. We could have a study session." All that kind of all that kind of malarkey. Just remember, there has to be a reason for everything. In general, if you, if you're really good friends and you get to know them and you know stuff, there's starting to get more of a sort of two-way sort of emotional relationship with somebody. You maybe start telling them a bit more about your autism and stuff like that. They may, you know, start getting on friend basis and stuff. Still, don't message them every night. That's not a cool thing to do. Don't do it. Stop. Your fingers off those keyboards. People have this, this idea in the head that they're gonna get like a twinny or... Twinny? It sounds weird. Um, best friend or something like that. They're gonna hang out with them every two days or anything like that. It's not realistic. Maybe you might get to that stage, but don't push it. Good. Dun dun. Diddly dusted. It's the end of the video. What are you doing here? Get out of there. Get your, get your shoes on, strap over those booties. Get them on. Get your socks on. Get your trousers on. Get some the other, put, put a t-shirt on. Like it's embarrassing. Put a t-shirt on. Don't listen to anything I say. That's 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 the message. Um, but do do everything that I say in the next little bit. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, if it set your mind straight forward, you know, maybe a bit of a hard hitter. Maybe it might be quite hard. I don't understand because I used I used to be quite like that until I realised you can have more. You don't have to have one. You can talk to other people, and the more you do this, the more comfortable you get with it. But just try and stay relaxed as possible. People like relaxed people. If you like the video, don't like it. That's what I'm saying. I'm, Asperger's growth here. Don't like the video. Don't you dare. Get, get your finger off that. Nope. The like button. It's getting too much abuse, guys. Don't. Don't click the like button. And don't click that subscribe button. Don't hit that subscribe button, and don't you ever, don't you ever, hit that little dingy, little dingy bell. Don't do that. Just don't. Stop it. Thanks very much, guys. This has been Asperger's Growth from Thomas Henley, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Latest.